everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Runa Shimansky and uh, first of all I wanted to apologize for not posting a video for a very long time. So uh, I have been really busy. I had tons of work and I work alone so sometimes you really can't or you really don't find the time to make YouTube videos and as you might imagine for those who do vid for, for those people in the know who, who do these videos, they know how long they take to film, to get it right, get the lightning right, to get the sound right, then you have to edit the video, then you have to upload the video, so it's like a second job besides the job which I love doing, which for example in this case is building an engine. So first of all, sorry for not posting uh, videos at an earlier stage, but I hope uh, this video after a long time is a fun video to watch. Fun for you, of course, not fun for me, because in this case we're talking about a Land Rover 200 TDI Defender engine again. Uh, a little bit of history on this engine. Bought from a scrapyard in Spain with an invoice, so proper engine. Uh, it was sold as a running engine, which it might, might be, but I'm not sure uh, with the fault this engine has. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't start it. So, uh, well, long story short, uh, it was bought, like I said, from the scrapyard as a running engine. We took the whole engine apart. Uh, the engine is due for a rebuild in a Defender. Uh, I mean, like a proper rebuild from scratch, uh, like a new car, and the engine was supposed to go in. Now we have a major problem because uh, according to my knowledge, and this is what I wanted to show you guys in this video, and I wanted to get your opinion for those in the know who watch my videos, maybe there is someone out there who can give me a third or fourth opinion. I've asked around for a couple of them, so, and all of them came to the same conclusion. Uh, what we have here is a cracked block, and a cracked block not on the water galleries, I know they crack sometimes in the water galleries, which can be tested upon rebuild, but I only had one like once in 10 years so I don't pay for the machine shop anymore to do the water crack testing. What we have here is uh, possibly a crack block. I'm still unsure uh, if, if, if this is the case or not but the thing is uh, the engine was completely taken apart of course everything was checked the piston uh, the bores the cylinders were found to be worn so new pistons oversized pistons from KS, Colton Schmidt, uh, the machine shop did everything, uh, put everything back together with all the new things, uh, bearings, uh, the Conrad bearings, uh, everything was measured so the engine is tight and smooth, as good as new. What happens is, and this is what, what baffles me, is when, we, when I put the head down and bolted down the right sequence, you would feel that the that the camshaft, which sits in the block of these engines, it would get tighter and tighter. And if the, it was on the first, I have done it like three times now. If you do it in one stage, with the first stage of 40 newton meters, you tighten it down in the sequence, it gets a little bit more harder. Then you have another 60 degrees, it gets a little bit more harder to turn. And after the final stage, you can't almost even turn the crankshaft anymore. So what is it? What is it? What is it not? I mean, this head is a very simple design. There is nothing, there are no moving parts, okay? Then um, the rockers which sit in here, I'm going to show it to you maybe on another perspective, which is easier. So this is another perspective. So as you know, or the people who love Land Rovers, the 200 TDIs and the 300 TDI engines are very basic in its operation. So nothing fancy, nothing more serious. The crank, uh, the crank, the, sorry, the camshaft sits in the block which is very easy. You have the cam followers, which have little spheres, and they move these little rods, which activate the rocker arms of the valve. So very simple design. All of them are free. I've tested them before. But what happens is, when you tighten down the head, the cam takes a lot of effort to rotate, okay? I'm gonna show it to you. You can't really feel the pressure, but look at the resistance I'm making. Okay, this is, and after it gets smoother, and after the first initial, the initial um, overcoming the initial resistance, it actually turns quite okay. But what we have over here is 
the head is not tightened down, especially on these four bolts, okay? I was wondering what would happen. Uh, I removed the head completely. I checked for, I mean, everything was done on this engine, don't get me wrong, the, 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 the block was skimmed, the, the head was skimmed, everything is uh, perfectly straight, so no warping or anything. But what happens is, if I, if I happen to undo these bolts, which are not really tightened down, okay, only these two I tightened them down before. And this is what I wanted to show you live. And this is the kind of stuff that doesn't happen. I never had a cracked block. I mean, uh, I'm open to opinions. If anybody can give me another opinion on what is happening here, um, I would love to know. So look at the cam now, okay? It turns very smoothly and very easily. So to my mind, uh, what you can see over here, uh, these four bolts, okay, they sit almost, or they sit exactly on top of the cam bearings. It has one bearing here, it has one bearing here, one bearing here, and the one in the front, which causes the most wear on the crank because of the timing belt, which does a lot of effort, and this bearing over here takes up the most damage when you exchange them. These ones are new, they were inline reamed. So, what we have here, according to my opinion, and this is just me talking, I don't know if this is the case or not, so let me, uh, for my, so you have a face in the video at least. Uh, what happens here is when you tighten these, when you tighten these bolts down, these ones are tightened down according to spec, okay? I just untightened these, I even put a little bit of a, uh, I even put a washer down here. But I, I looked with the, with the boroscope down if the bolt was too long and it might hit the block with parts these days, you never know. No, no such thing. I mean, it could do pressure on top of the, the, the cam bearing or it might be cracked down there. This is not the case, okay? I put the washers in here just in case and I tighten it down. According to my mind, if you tighten these two down, the cam will still rotate, okay? As soon as you tighten these two down, it will pull up the block here, which according to my mind is cracked somewhere in here and these little galleries. These are the weakest parts of the whole block, so this is where uh, the thread goes in here. Of course, you can see it, it goes directly down on the cam bearing and what happens is it has a slight crack and when you tighten it down, it pulls up the it pulls up a little bit the, 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 the block and is enough as the cam, as the, the, as the camshaft is perfectly straight, it's enough to cause uh, this, uh, this drag on the cam. You might say you can start the engine as is. I wouldn't do it. I mean, what happens is uh, sometimes when you do it, even when you don't, uh, the camshaft, the bearings, they're very hard to get in. Okay, they're press fitted in and they have to, uh, the machine shop has to inline ream uh, the whole camshaft so it doesn't have any tight spots. If you have tight spots on the cam, what happens is it will uh, rotate, it will spin the bearing in the block, okay? And then you damage the block, damage the bearing, you can get oversized bearings, but you don't even want to go there. I had this a couple of times on engine I took apart, I've saw, I've seen it, because people put these bearings in and they don't have the machine shop inline ream, so the cam is rotating really freely. So this is what happens. Um, upon assembly, upon disassembly, I'm sorry, I, did, uh, I didn't notice anything. Everything was running smoothly or freely. What happened in my mind, uh, I didn't look inside, of course, uh, when I took the, 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 the camshaft out, the bearings were worn, but they're always worn. They didn't spin in the block, so what I would guess is this engine cracked with the, with the cracked sometimes as a running engine. Uh, the material of the bearing, the bearing didn't spin in its housing, but it took off enough material from the bearing itself. It's the soft, it's soft material, okay? It took off enough uh, that the engine could still run. Uh, and these are very sturdy engines, so they probably run as is. But as a rebuild, I'm not confident to, I'm not even confident, I'm not gonna continue this rebuild. Which you can imagine is a shit show. Uh, the work involved, 
the man hours already in here, uh, the parts already in here, it's nuts. It's nuts. And getting to this stage of a build and seeing something like this, it, uh, it breaks your heart. I mean, as a mechanic or as someone who loves old cars, getting an engine back into this shape, I don't even know how many hours. I mean, it's, uh, and it's not fulfilling. It's not a fulfilling job. When you get to this stage, the ancillaries are missing, a couple of other things, and you get to this stage, and you have to take the whole, hen the whole engine apart again, and try to find a new engine block. So, I will pop the head once again, uh, just to double check measures, and uh, double check the, 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 the face, the mating faces, but uh, to my mind, this is the problem. I will show you again what happens when I tighten it down live. So this is 40 Newton meters, okay? As soon as you tighten down these two 40, this is the first stage of the tightening process, okay? These are still free, but I'm gonna tighten them down anyway. Okay? And then you let these two go, okay? You undo them again. Okay, so these ones are not tightened down, these ones are to first stage. You can still see the cam. Let me see if I can get it. The cam is still rotating pretty freely. As soon as you tighten these down to the first stage, as soon as you tighten these down to the first stage, this over here there is all already already a drag on the cam okay if we do it I'm not gonna be super precise here but this is 60 degrees if we tighten these down let's say by eye by feeling should be around 40 50 degrees look at the drag on the cam I mean I'm not making this up I have to really make effort to get the cam going. So, if anyone, uh, if anyone has any other opinion on the subject, I'm happy to hear it. Write down in the comments what you think is happening here. Uh, in my mind, this is a crack block in these two galleries over here, because if I tighten these down really good, uh, nothing happens, the camera will still run freely. If I tighten down these two, they will, it will not run or spin. So, uh, it's, uh, it's sad, but this is, this is not fulfill, no, this is not a fulfilling job. I mean, this is really where you get to the point, man, I just want to throw it away and don't think about it anymore. But, uh, well, we'll try to get another engine block. Uh, probably not a Defender, this one is 11L, so from a Defender. We'll try to, to get a Discovery block, uh, hone it again to oversized pistons, to fit these pistons in. Um, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> and painting it and getting all the, the gunk out of the engine from the rust and everything. I mean, it's so much work, so much, so much stuff that goes on and so much love that goes into in building an engine like this that it really breaks my heart. But uh, I don't feel, I don't, I mean, this, I can't continue this repo. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. So uh, uh, I hope you, uh, I think for the ones in the know, uh, but maybe somebody comes up with a different opinion. Um, there are not many uh, businesses in Portugal that do x-rays on the block, but even if you x-ray a block and you see the crack, what are you going to do? You can't weld it in here. It's impossible to weld. I mean, first of all, you have to find it. Uh, I had once a block that uh, had a hole in here, this on the outside, you can weld it. Uh, it's an artwork, it's expensive, but it's fixable. In this case, even, with, even if they show you, here is a crack, what are you going to do? I mean, it's... So, this is a throwaway, unfortunately. Well, uh, first video after a long time, I hope uh, you find it interesting that uh, stuff does happen. and. Shit does happen when you when you're dealing with engines that are 30 years old, 40 years old. They so many heat cycles. I mean, we don't know what caused the crack, uh, but I would say uh, 
fatigue, uh, fatigue of the material, okay? So uh, the heat cycles take, take their toll, heating up, cooling down, heating up, cooling down, heating up, cooling down. All the things expand, contract, expand, contract. This is not rubber. Well, rubber goes bad as well, but uh, I think, in my honest opinion, they only take up so many heat cycles and after too many of them, they develop cracks. In this case, crack block. So, hope you enjoyed this little first video. I'm not, I'm not gonna keep any too long. Uh, I'm gonna do the second video here of a TD5 engine, which I already have on the engine stands as well. This came from an uh, automatic uh, discovery. I took the whole thing apart. The engine was running really smooth, but it had a hasgat, head gasket failure. I wanted to check the bearings, uh, no wears on the sleeves and pistons. I mean, everything looks great. We're going to put it back together. I'm going to show you how it's done properly and, uh, well, explain the minor differences in the TD5 engines from the 10 to 15P and all that fun stuff for the tech geeks out there who love cars, okay? Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this little video, and see you next time.